ITN News. Get the whole story. Initially starting off his career in pharmacy, Richard Mwangi changed his career trajectory to audiology. My name is Dr. Masi Korir and on this episode of Doctor's Diary, we get to see more of the work that an audiologist does and what Richard does to help people with hearing impairment to move from the silence that is their world to the hustle and bustle that is the beauty of life. The curiosity bug about toxicity from medicines hit Richard, coupled with wanting to know the process patients went through in seeking hearing care. My name is Richard Nyomomwangi. I'm a lead consultant audiologist uh, for doctors of hearing. Doctors of hearing, um, their facilities are deal with uh, hearing health care and balance. With every visit to an ENT surgeon or an audiologist, I often find myself getting a free ear checkup and this visit to doctors of hearing was no different. Hearing impairment varies from mild to moderate or profound hearing impairment, each requiring different kind of treatment and care. It's an interesting um, uh, healthcare branch uh, that uh, somehow uh, it has been forgotten. But uh, to my case is that uh, this uh, happened during, uh, or the idea came about when I was in my internship uh, after doing a pharmacy course, and then we were supposed to do the internship, you know, the how it rolls, then you get to graduate. So during my internship, uh, uh, of course, you're not the one handling patient uh, directly. You have, uh, you know, the pharmacy supervisor there, uh, the person who's an overall boss who takes care of everything that goes out to the patient. Uh, we get some free time to read some inserts and uh, for some medication, you know, take for example like quinine, you read the inserts and find that they have got an aspect of toxicity. Uh, you now for the hearing, it is autotoxicity. And then you wonder where do these people go to and after getting, you know, their hearing damaged. Autotoxicity basically means that the hearing or the hearing nerve has gotten damaged by the medication. Now, you start thinking around and see, uh, I think there's an li another line of um, uh, healthcare that is not talked much about. And this time you start a growing interest. And also you find that, uh, you know, during the interaction, because that's most, the most time you get to interact with the patient one-on-one, -on -one, there's some uh, children who have got congenital aspects, you know. Maybe they have been brought for uh, patient, I mean, uh, the parents think that they're autistic. But, uh, you know, just uh, taking a few history or you're just having a chat because of the free time you have with the patient, uh, you find that uh, they might be having an aspect of this thing that is called congenital hearing. Mm -hmm. That's how the interest started uh, on where they go, who takes care of them, and wha wha where the causes are done. Getting to where he is now, unfortunately, came with a cost that he slowly and painfully is shedding. Richard dedicated his time to setting up his trade in hearing. He forgot about his own well-being. Sometimes back I was... Uh, I was I was over it, so to say, uh, and uh, uh, doing those phys uh, physical examination, you go, you know, uh, for, to the doctor and just to ch check your BP, just to check your sugar levels, things like that, and found that uh, uh, I'm my kilos were, were, let me not mention on the camera. <laughs> so <laughs> you can mention them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was weighing 104 kilos. Okay. What are you, what are you now I'm about 88, 89, there about. So um, I checked myself to the gym. Uh, these things I've not done before. I dropped out from the gym two or three times <laughs> before I became consistent. So um, then uh, the consistency was when I start seeing the results. It takes time for somebody who's trying to lose. It is not an easy journey. So when I started seeing the results, I hit 100, 99, and then uh, I started being consistent with it. And uh, I got to a level, I got 88, 89. And then um, my trainer says, oh, you know, I, 
I was in boxing and karate sometimes, but I said, why don't I join in? So I joined in, and it's an interesting thing. I tell you, you should, you should try. It's an interesting stuff, because uh, apart from uh, lifting uh, weights and doing cardio and treadmill, uh, the, the, the martial arts, especially when you're doing the boxing and those uh, the, 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 the karate, you, you get so exhausted and, and within a very short time. So it would be best for me to do that before even doing the treadmill. Or either way, one day I'll do that or I do the treadmill. So it is, it is an interesting part. You exercise your whole body. And uh, I'm not in bad shape now. <laughs> yes, I had to get back to myself. Uh, I mean, uh, I think when you were setting up the practice, uh, it took much of my time that I forgot about what I eat, what I, uh, you know, uh, how. I mean, the lifestyle thing just went off. I, I never concentrated much into it until I woke up one day and said, no, this has to be checked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And most interesting, I remember uh, um, I went to look for uh, the, the trendy skinny jeans and, uh, you know, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the salesperson told me, oh, I don't think we have your size. And uh, <laughs> that was a bit off, but, <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I worked out and now mm -hmm. I even have more sizes of that. Mm -hmm. I have an option. It was a wake up call. And I mean, also, uh, you know, when you have this kind of weight, you feel pain everywhere. Sometimes you, you feel like your body is so stuck, it's one solid thing that you cannot move. Uh, I mean, it's, it's uncomfortable. But you get used to it until you find that it is a way of living. But now when you start working now to get back to where you started, you know, losing weight, being flexible, it becomes, uh, you know, a lifestyle and it's the healthy way to live. Yeah. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic made this process even harder. This was in February 2020. And then uh, uh, I start checking the diet. Of course, COVID came, people dropped out of the gym. One of the, that was the reason that. <laughs> so I was not doing it so well. And then um, I had achieved to get about 88 uh, in month of uh, October, and I got COVID. But I had easy time dealing with it. I never lose the taste. I mean, the only thing was general fatigue. And I think it's because I had made a good decision of losing weight. And uh, I conquered it. So I, I went through isolation in my house and I, I could not see anyone in 10, 12 days. Uh, but I mean, I, it was okay. But I say it's normally because I had made decision. I don't know, but uh, with the kilos of 104, uh, breathing was an issue. Also, I was just doing two, uh, three staircases and then you find you have to... Uh, take a break, but now I can do from ground floor to the fourth floor comfortably. Initially, his parents had an influence on his choice of career, though still in the healthcare sector. During our time, these are the courses that uh, you'll find that uh, the parent knew a certain uh, pharmacist who had a very successful career, and uh, they visualized their son or their daughter becoming one. So uh, it is yes and no. When I got into it, I, it was interesting because uh, I always loved chemistry and uh, biology course. But when I got to the course, um, it was interesting. Otherwise, I was to be in tours and I travel. I had even started looking for colleges to do uh, foreign languages because I knew another guy who was in Postman's a company and then he was doing very well. And I mean, it was, it looks like it's a flash job. He was comfortable doing, it was fun doing whatever he was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The cost of implants, hearing aids, and access to care are some of the challenges which Richard says limits many from getting treatment. This coupled with the fact that insurance companies do not cover for these assistive devices. It is it's challenging. Uh, one thing is because, uh, of course, it is not known that. Uh, when you have a hearing uh, problem, there's some people like us you can come to. But uh, having said that, it's challenging because it is a huge investment. Uh, all this we do is that uh, it's assessment and it requires the equipment. Now, uh, we don't give prescription like normal doctors. So ours is the patient comes in, he's risk taking, and then we start doing the assessment. Now, this equipment, there are quite a number uh, from balance assessment, 
from pediatric hearing assessment, from uh, you know uh, 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 audiology in um, adult uh, assessing the adult. I mean, it's quite of a different equipment we use, and also when it comes to uh, the hearing, is because we find that most of these cases that are coming to us, it is where we call sensory neuro hearing impairment. Basically, mean that it's the nerve that has been affected, and they cannot benefit so much into the uh, you know medical what you call medical treatment or the surgical intervention so they'll use the hearing aids to assist them richard works closely with ear nose and throat surgeons who equally depend on him in some instances uh the ent would want to confirm that and how the best way to confirm that they'll send the patient to us uh we assess the uh, the middle ear function of a child or an adult or whatever the patient uh, maybe adult or a, or, a, or a child and then we say yes there's uh, fluid in the middle ear please continue with either uh, the medical or surgical intervention. So we have to work hard in hand with them. And um, I mean, it's, 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 it, we, can, we cannot get away from it, you know, we depend on each other. Because even us, we see uh, when the patient just comes to us, we see maybe it's perforation in the, in, the, in the eardrum. So we send them to the ENT. So it is a win-win situation in terms of uh, treatment towards the patient. Hearing aids would cost anything from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of Kenya shillings, while cochlear implants cost over two million shillings. This, while out of reach for many people, pales in comparison to the price of missing out on communication and relationships with people. The, the hearing healthcare aspect of it has been forgotten for so many years. So now that you know, technology is coming up, these hearing aids, they are not manufactured locally, and we have got very um uh, few manufacturers i think they're not more than 30 to 40 especially for the hearing aids uh doing the known manufacturers uh doing the hearing aids and now when you find that uh, we have to buy from them the exchange rate the taxes here by the time you are stocking it to sell to the patient you know you have to al also consider the taxes the importation the foreign exchange things like that but yes they're a bit costly it's not uh, you know it has uh, a, a, a scope of medical approach that has been not known so much. Even now as we talk, uh, you'll find that some people don't know where to go when they have a hearing impairment. We might say, or we might say it's been challenging, especially in the development of the, uh, the, the technology, or to bring it up to the patients, which has taken long. And uh, that's now that there are some people, pe few people doing it. Uh, of course, there's a scale of uh, demand and supply, especially in that. Yeah. Diagnosing hearing impairment early, especially in children, makes the difference between the child growing up to reach their full potential or the child missing out on everyday milestones key to their overall growth and development, both socially and academically. If you see what other countries are doing, the Western countries, where what you call developed countries, they have something we call 136. It's, 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 it's a formula of assessment of a child. So what that means, uh, it is, you find this one in, uh, you know, eye hearing uh, detection and intervention. So what that happens is that uh, the child is screened one month or during birth, okay? Uh, you, know, of, uh, you know, two, three days after birth, the child is screened, the hearing is screened, and what they normally look for is that, is it a pass or a refer, okay? Now if the child gets a pass, that means the outer hair cell, cell function in the cochlea it's performing very well and the child is let be and you let the child go but then there's a number of uh, children who fail the test and they get a uh, kind of result now when they get a refer, this test is repeated after three months we said it's one three six so once it is paid after uh, three months you are looking for a pass or a refer. so those will pass because you know they might have failed the test because maybe the room was noisy maybe the child was crying or you know or there was fluid in the ear because when they, you know during birth there's a bit of fluid so there's fluid in the ear and it was not dry enough so those things can make a child fail the test now if the child gets a pass after the second testing which is you're doing after three months now let the child be and uh, let the milestone take uh, uh, take over from there but now you get some other children who fail the test now at three months you want to do the screening, you do the diagnostic and start to plan the intervention. Now once that is done, by six months you are saying the intervention has already been done and this child will uh, get the milestone 
with others. So we start bubbling at the same age with the peers, we start developing speech with the same age as the peers because the intervention was done uh, early enough. But what you find here is that, uh, or in quite a number of the countries is that, uh, you know, they have some maids and the stories of, you know, it, it takes long in this family, or the uncle talked when he was 10 years, or oh, we need to go and do something to the grandfather, you know, that kind of myth, which is so wrong, uh, and they don't have any basis scientifically speaking. So the only thing that can help is that get to know the child is hearing and let the mother stand for. So the policy, what you're talking about, is that we can try to incorporate the early uh, hearing intervention and detection. And that will, uh, will say that, uh, or it will mean that by the time this child is getting to the speech, if you diagnose the hearing impairment at an early stage, uh, he'll be at the same level of the peers. So this child will be able to compete very well academically, socially, you know, and the way they'll choose even, you know, political part of it. Whatever they want to choose later in life, they'll uh, compete with others who have got normal hearing. Now, we need the education to be out there and the government institutions to get involved into it, uh, where uh, they should advocate for early hearing detection, intervention and detection, uh, detection and intervention, so that, um, you know, this can be treated at early age, so that the children or the patient who diagnosed with that can be able to uh, develop speech language with others. Apart from this kind of early screening for newborns, Richard and team works with employees from the manufacturing sector, steel and cement industries, for example, where they are exposed to noise day in and day out. So we're also supporting them either by importing the equipment for them, showing them how things are done, uh, training them how equipment they work, or we are doing the hearing screening for them. Because what you find that is that um, uh, noise is a great aspect of uh, damaging the hearing, what you call noise-induced hearing impairment. So it's a mandatory for them to check their, uh, you know, their staff whether the noise has really affected their patient, uh, I mean, their, their staff or not. Uh, so we are also giving them that guidance. Now, another thing we normally do is, um, you know, just giving back to the society. And uh, we do quite a number of CSR. We try to do one major every year. And uh, when we started, we did uh, one in Nyumba Yawaze, somewhere in Kasarani. Uh, that one, we, we, we went there and found that the, you know, the, the, the old people there had quite a number of uh, uh, issues, hearing issues because of age-related, hearing issues because of wax impaction, or hearing issues because, you know, they've got, uh, uh, you know, just a foreign body in the ear. And uh, together with my colleague, uh, uh, he's an ENT doctor, who went there, he was doing the medical part of it, I was doing the assessment of the hearing test, and also we're doing the cleaning of the ear. It was a very successful one. The one was so fulfilling is one we did for the that uh, um, suicide old man uh, uh, died last year. May God rest his soul in peace. So it, it was it was good interacting with him, and because we can speak the same language, I ended up spending the whole day there, and he was telling me about the bomb and the wars, and it was, like, it was a history class for me. Yeah. In all this, Richard finds time to involve his family in his business. I have four kids, yes. So uh, this, uh, the girl, um, uh, the other day, you, you seen the, our logo. So came up uh, uh, during the holiday time, and um, she's a artistic by excellence, I would say that. Uh, and uh, she do our logo on a cup. And you see our cups now, those cups were, the idea came from her. And uh, she's interested to take part into the practice. Uh, but it's just in grade four now. So we don't know whether she'll change after learning other things. But she's so interested into it. And um, I mean, they, of, they often come here because we don't see what happened. And they would ask them to practice as me, and as I listen to them. And uh, they'll say some few things and find, okay, I think you, you, you are in the right direction. They, they'll take history for each other. The girl will take the history of the, the, the brother. And, uh, you know, the practice what uh, children do best now in a, um, a hearing health uh, facility. Richard's assessment of my hearing got a clean bill of health. Dr. Masi Korir for KT News Doctor's Diary.
Let's break the silence.